Welcome back to the Reload Bench. I was having a conversation with a friend about collecting military surplus and that inspired me to do this video. In the conversation I was talking about how some of the military surplus items I collect I try to get as many variations of that item as possible. Now the variations could just be that there were modifications made over the lifespan of the item. You know you have the original one then you have the mod mod 1, mod 2, mark 1, mark 2, a, A1, A2, A3, what, how, whatever sort of uh, suffix the military wants to put on it, or in some cases they all had the exact same nomenclature, but changes were made over the, the lifetime of that item. Other changes or other variations in the item could simply be what company was contracted to make it. Sometimes there were multiple contractors at the same time, and sometimes it just changed over the, the lifetime of the item, and you might simply just have a different marking on the item based on that contractor or they might have a slight variation in that particular item that's still within military spec but that allows you as the collector to identify it as being made by a different contractor. So in the video today I'm going to talk about the current US military holster the M12. I was issued a holster like this with an M9 when I served in the early and mid 90s. I've already done a comparison between the M12 holster, the US M12 holster, and the Italian M12 holster in a previous video, and I'll go ahead and include a link at the end of this video. Now, preceding the M12 was the M1916. Some of the differences with this holster are that it's right-handed only, it has brass hardware, and that it can attach to a belt either with this loop here, or to a cartridge belt by putting the hanger through the eyelet, Just working it in like that, and there you go. It's attached to your belt. Now, if you were to collect some of these M1916 holsters, I haven't found really much in the way of variations or any uh, sort of uh, literature with regard to variations. They were they were black holsters, and I couldn't find anything uh, that said anything about uh, polishing them. I was doing some research for another video I, I may or may not make about these holsters in particular. However, I did find some maintenance information in there about removing mildew from them and something that kind of implied that you would apply leather dye to these. But if you were to try to collect different versions of this holster, at least military issue versions, because there are, are a lot of reproductions out there and some people have taken these holsters and they've, they've done different things with them uh, post-military, I guess you could say. You would look back here for a stamping. This one happens to be made by Grattan or Grayton and Knight Manufacturing Company out of Massachusetts. So if you were to try to get one of every contractor that made this, this is where you're gonna look for that sort of information as a collector. Likewise, on the M12, it's got that information right here. Now this one's made by Bianchi, who I believe was the original contractor for the M12. And uh, the M12 holster here attaches to a cartridge belt differently here. If I can work this. So you've simply got this, this spring-loaded clasp that uh, <laughs> I'm making it look harder than what it is, but there's really nothing to locking this in to the belt. It also, if I can open this without fumbling around too much on camera here, it also has this loop here. For a smaller belt but something interesting about this flap is that it is removable and that you can change this from right-handed to left-handed you can see right here it's got the loops and you can never done it on this one but you can take out let's go ahead and slip this out this will be the first time I've ever done this. Slip this out, reverse it, with a little bit of work here, you can simply put that in and reverse it, and now you have a left-handed holster, something you couldn't do with the M1916. So for you lefties out there, I did that one for you. Even though this holster is 20 years old, I've taken really good care of it. And uh, actually, it's more than 20 years old. I've taken really good care of it. So as long as you maintain 
this M12 holster, it should work out pretty well for you, in my experience. So, it has that advantage. Also, the nylon material is not as uh, likely to crack or rot or mildew like the leather material. So, I believe that you'll get a longer life out of this particular style holster. You can go ahead and you can put a... Uh, a lanyard strap around your leg. There is a drop leg attachment for it, although I believe that's not military issue. It's available. You can remove the flap altogether if you want, and you can put a thumb brake on here. That's available aftermarket as well. And the holster comes with a plastic cleaning rod for use out in the field in a situation where you don't have access to your standard cleaning rod. So I really find the M12 holster very useful. Now I know there's a lot of people out there who don't like flap holsters because it's slow on the draw. If I had the thumb brake, that would be something I could use to speed up my draw. But when I open carry, which is another thing some people don't agree with, but when I open carry, having this flap there to protect the firearm from scratches and because of the flap, you can see that I've got a gun, but it doesn't look as intimidating. That, to me, is more important in my circumstance. In your circumstance, it might be an entirely different thing. There are some people that absolutely disagree with open carry, and you have the right to that opinion. But for me, open carry, uh, for, for me, I believe, in my circumstances, it's a better option. And I'm not very fast on the draw, no matter what holster I have. So I'd rather, in, in my experience, I'd rather have that flap. I'd rather have the retention than really have the speed. Your circumstance may be different, and I'm not questioning that. I think we all have a right to our opinion. But when I open carry, that's the holster I use. So now that I've explained the differences between the previous military issue holster and the current military issue holster, and some of the features of the M12, let me show you some variations on the M12. So you could say this is also an unboxing video. In a previous video, I talked about some gear that I bought for my cartridge belt from AmmoCanMan.com, and I said I'd be making a future purchase from them, and I did. So here we have the M12 holster, and this one is made by a different contractor. This one here is made by Cathay Enterprises. Now what I was able to find out about Cathay Enterprises is that they were based in Texas and they are currently out of business. They were they made leather holsters for the government before being contracted out to make these nylon M12 holsters. Now you can see it's got the same flap set up here. It's reversible. It's got the same attachment for a cartridge belt. This one looks to be new old stock. And if you put them side by side, you can see that they've got similar markings until you get to the name of the manufacturer. I know that probably won't show up too well on camera. And one thing I'd like to take a look at are the flaps made to the same spec. Yeah, they look about the same right there as well. This one just looks a little bit wider, actually, but that could just be because it's new, it hasn't been used. But there we have another manufacturer of the M12 holster. Through Amazon.com, from Bainbridge Professional Services, I ordered another M12 holster. I had to go ahead and cut, they had, uh, on this reclosable bag, they had actually sealed it at the top, but you can see it's got all the nomenclature and national stock number. And this comes with similar instructions as the previous holster. And it's got this insert, which is the same kind of insert that came with the Bianchi holster when I bought it with my M9. And you can see it's got the same attachment here. It's got the reversible loops. The flap is the same. It's got the attachment here for uh, for you to attach a lanyard to your leg. And on the back, the markings show Weckworth Manufacturing. Now, they're still in business. They're in Kansas, and according to their website, 
60 to 65 percent of their business is for the U.S. government and that they are an industrial sewing contractor. So they could still be currently making these off and on for the government, but that's another contractor who made this M12 holster. The last contractor I was able to find that made these M12 holsters, I haven't really been able to find any information about the company, if they're still in business or how long they were around or anything else like that. But through a company called Sport Buyers out of Kentucky, I was able to order this. I believe I got this on Amazon as well. Let's go ahead and open it up. A lot of packing material. And this one has got a national stock number on it, nomenclature, and the same kind of instructions. Here, we have it marked Hill Country. And I could not find anything about Hill Country leather. I found a website for a company called that, but I don't believe they're uh, an industrial manufacturer. So I'm really not sure what what is... Uh, What's going on with uh, with Hill Country? But this one's also got a nylon insert. It's got a set of reversible loops, and it attaches the same way as the other M12 holsters. Everything on it is nice and tight because it is new old stock. So there we go. Four different manufacturers four different slight variations on the US M12 holster. Some of these are still available brand new and some are available used. So you may be interested in trying to collect one of each for yourself or this just might be something that somebody might find useful if they already have one of these holsters and never bothered to turn it around and just see who the manufacturer was. If anybody out there watching this knows of any other manufacturers for these holsters or possibly could tell me more about uh, Hill Country Leather, I would really appreciate any information that you have. And in the meantime, I'm going to have to get some more cartridge belts to go with these. But actually what I think I might do is since these are all new old stock, I might just keep those for collecting purposes and perhaps get another used holster if I decide to, I want to have a second rig because uh, this, or perhaps I'll buy a brand new Bianchi and just keep using this one that I've already started getting dirty and, and scuffed up. And that may be really the route I take is buy a brand new Bianchi and put it in with these others and just keep it for collecting purposes. Although it's good to know that if I need to put it on my belt, it'll work. I know it's been a long video, but I really wanted to talk about this, and I really want to thank my friend Jason Stewart for helping me out with this video, for inspiring me to make it. And there, there were some people that had made some comments, and I had said I was going to be putting out this video, and I just kept putting it off and putting it off because of other reasons. I finally made it. So uh, if there's anything anybody would like to see with regard to these holsters or, or really more information anybody can pass along to me, I would really appreciate it. Please leave uh, any comments uh, down below in the comment section, and thanks for watching.